Okay, so we are at the uh, ceremony of 12. Jonas's group is taking a new spot. He has endured two days of this torture of waiting for his assignment. Right? Chapter 7. Now Jonas's group had taken a new place in the auditorium, trading with the new 11s so that they sat in the very front immediately before the stage. They were arranged by their original numbers, the numbers they had been given at birth. The numbers were rarely used after the naming, but each child knew his number, of course. Sometimes parents used them in irritation at a child's misbehavior, indicating that mischief made one unworthy of a name. What do your parents do when they're really upset? <laughs> Call you by your middle name, right? <coughs> Everybody knows bad things are coming when you get middle named. Jonas always chuckled when he heard a parent exasperated call sharply to a whining toddler. That's enough, 23. Jonas was 19. He had been the 19th new child born his year. Yeah. It had meant that at his naming, he had been already standing and bright eyed soon to walk and talk. It had given him a more slightly slight advantage of the first year or two the first year or two, a little more maturity than many of his groupmates who had been born in the later months of that year, but it evened out as it always did by three. After three, the children progressed as much the same level, though by their first number, though by their first number, one could always tell who was a few months older than the others in his group. Technically, Jonas's full number was 1119, since there were other 19s, of course, in each age group. And today, now that the new 11s had been advanced this morning, there were two 1119s. At the midday break, he had exchanged smiles with the new, with the new one, with the new one, a shy female named Harriet. But the duplication was only for these few hours. Very soon, he would no longer be an 11, but a 12, and age would no longer matter. He would be an adult like his parents, though a new one and untrained still. Asher was four and sat now in the row ahead of Jonas. He would receive his assignment fourth. Fiona, 18, was on his left. On his other side, sent 20, a na male named Pierre, whom Jonas didn't like much. Pierre was very serious, not much fun, and wor a worrier and a tattletale, too. Have you checked the rules, Jonas? Pierre was always whispering solemnly. I'm not sure that's within the rules. Usually, it was some foolish thing that no one cared about. Opening his tunic if it was a day if it was a day with a breeze, taking a brief try on a friend's bicycle just to experience the different feel of it. The initial speech at the ceremony of 12 was made by the chief elder, the leader of the community who was elected every 10 years. The speech was much the same each year, recollection of the time of childhood and the period of preparation, the coming responsibilities of adult life, the profound importance of assignment, the seriousness of training to come. Then the, chief, then the chief elder moved ahead in her speech. This is the time, she began, looking directly at them, when we acknowledge the differences. You eleven have spent all your years till now learning to fit in, to standardize your behavior, to curb any impulse that might set you apart from the group. But today we honor your differences. They have determined your futures. She began to describe this year's group and its variety of personalities, though she signaled no one out by name. She mentioned that there was one who had a singular skills as caretaking, another who loved new children, one with unusual scientific aptitude, and a fourth for whom physical labor was an obvious pleasure. Jonas shifted in his seat, trying to recognize each reference as one of his groupmates. The caretaking skills were no doubt those of Fiona on his left. He remembered noticing the tenderness with which she had bathed the old. Probably the one with scientific aptitude was Benjamin, the male who advised new important equipment for the rehabilitation center. He heard nothing that he recognized as himself, Jonas. Finally, the chief elder paid tribute to the hard work of her committee, which had performed the observations so meticulously all year. The committee of elders stood and was acknowledged by applause. Jonas noticed Asher was a yawning slightly, covering his mouth politely with his hand. Then, at last, the chief elder called number one to the stage, and the assignments began. Number one. That'd be an amazing number. That'd be my number. 
Each announcement was lengthy, accompanied by a speech directed at the new 12. Jonas tried to pay attention as one, smiling happily, received her assignment as Fitch Hack fish hatchery attendant along with the words of praise for her childhood spent doing many volunteer hours there and her obvious interest in the important process of providing nourishment to the community number one her name was madeline returned finally amidst applause to her seat wearing the new badge that designated her fish hatchery attendant Jonas was certainly glad that assignment was taken. He wouldn't have wanted it, but he gave Madeline a smile of congratulation. Can you imagine being 12 years old and that you're getting, is that what you were saying, Cameron? Like you're 12 years old and that's what you have to do for the rest of your life. I'm 12. I'm 12. I'm 12. I'm 12. That's what, but I mean, you know? Yeah. And what you're doing right now determines absolutely what you're doing for the rest of your life. That like you sucks. can't change that. When two, a female named Inger received her assignment as birth mother, Jonas remembered that his mother had called it a job without honor, but he thought that the committee had chosen well. Inger was a nice girl, though somewhat lazy, and her body was strong. She would enjoy the three years of being pampered that would follow her brief training, and she would give birth easily and well. And the task of labor that would follow would use her strength, keep her healthy, and impose self-discipline. In Birth mother was an important job, if lacking in prestige. Jonas noticed that Asher looked nervous. He kept turning his head and glancing back at Jonas until the group leader had to give him a silent chastisement, a motion to sit still and face forward. Three, Isaac was given an assignment as instructor of sixes, which obviously pleased him and was well-deserved. Now, there were three assignments gone, none of them ones that Jonas would have liked. Not that he could have been a birth mother anyway, he realized with amusement. He tried to sort through the list in his mind, the possible assignments that remained, but there were so many he gave it up. And anyway, now it was Asher's turn. He paid strict attention as his friend went to the stage and stood self-consciously beside the chief elder. All of us in the community know and enjoy Asher, the chief elder began. Asher grinned and scratched at his leg with the other foot. The audience chuckled softly. When the committee began to consider Ash's assignment, she went on, there were some possibilities that were immediately discarded, some that would clearly not have been right for Asher. For example, she said, smiling, we did not consider him for an instant we did not consider for an instant designating Asher as an instructor of threes. The audience howled with laughter. Asher laughed too, looking sheepish but pleased at the special attention. The instructors of threes were in charge of the acquisition of correct language. In fact, the chief elder continued, chuckling a little herself, we even gave a little thought to some retroactive chastisement for the one who had been Asher's instructor of threes so long ago. At the meeting where Asher was discussed, we retold many of the stories that we all remembered from his days of language acquisition, especially, she said, chuckling, the difference between snack and smack. Remember, Asher? Asher nodded ruefully, and the audience laughed aloud. Jonas did too. He remembered, though he had been only a three at the time himself. The punishment used for small children was a regulated system of smacks with a disciplined wand, a thin, flexible weapon that stung painfully when it was wielded. The child care specialists were trained very carefully in the, dis in the discipline methods. A quick smack across the hands for a bit of a minor misbehavior. Three sharp smacks on the bare leg for a second offense. Poor Asher, who always talked too fast and mixed up words, even as a child, as a toddler. As a three, eager for his juice and crackers at snack time, he one day said smack instead of snack as he stood waiting in line for the morning treat. Jonas remembered it clearly. He could still see little Asher wiggling with impatience in the line. He remembered the cheerful voice calling out, I want my smack! The other threes, including Jonas, had laughed nervously. Snack, they corrected. You meant snack, Asher, but the mistake had been made, and precision of language was one of the most important tasks of small children. Asher had asked for a smack. The discipline wand in the hand of the child care worker whistled as it came down across Asher's hands. Asher whimpered, cringed, and corrected himself instantly. Snack, he whispered. 
I know. Child Seems pretty harsh. That's kind of mean. Like, aren't they just for the purpose of like, the Like, let's say they're salty as child stick. The discipline one, and they, oh, uh, wait. But, but the next morning, he had done it again, and again the following week. He couldn't seem to stop, though for each lapse, the discipline wand came again, escalating to a series of painful lashes that left marks on Asher's legs. Eventually, for a period of time, Asher stopped talking altogether when he was three. Wow. It's a very it's really clear indication that this is not a perfect society, right? No. Mm-hmm. You're holding Right. There is a difference yeah. between assaulting and punishing. Yeah. They're venturing into assaulting, right? For a while, the chief elder said, relating the story, we had a silent Asher, but he learned. I mean, now they're laughing about it. <laughs> she turned to him with a smile when he began to talk again it was with greater precision and now his lapses are very few his corrections and apologies are very prompt and his good cute humor is unfailing the audience murmured in agreement asher's tearful disposition was well known throughout the community asher she lifted her voice to make the official announcement we have given you the assignment of assistant director of recreation. She clipped on his new badge as he stood beside her beaming. Then he turned and left the stage as the audience cheered. When he had taken his seat again, the chief elder looked down at him and said the words that she had said now four times and would say to each new 12. Somehow she gave it a special meaning for each of them. Asher, she said, thank you for your childhood. The assignments continued, and Jonas watched and listened, relieved now by the wonderful assignment his best friend had been given. But he was more and more apprehensive as his own approached. Now the new twelves in the row ahead had all received their badges. They were finger fingering them as they sat, and Jonas knew that each one was thinking about the training that lay ahead. For some, one studious male had been selected as doctor, a female as engineer, and another for law and justice. It would be years of hard work and study. Others, like laborers and birth mothers, would have a much shorter training period. 18, Fiona on his left was called. Jonas knew she must be nervous, but Fiona was a calm female. She had been sitting quietly, serenely throughout the ceremony. Even the even the applause, though enthusiastic, seemed serene when Fiona was given the important assignment of caretaker of the old. It was the it was the perfect it was perfect for such a sensitive, gentle girl, and her smile was satisfied and pleased when she took her seat beside him again. Jonas prepared himself to walk to the stage when the applause ended and the chief elder picked up the next folder and looked down to the group to call forward the next new 12. He was calm now that his turn had come. He took a deep breath and smoothed his hair with his hand. 20, he heard his voice say clearly. Pierre. Is that him? No, they forgot about him. He's 19. She skipped me, Jonas thought, stunned. Had he heard wrong? No. There was a sudden hush in the crowd, and he knew that the entire community realized the chief elder had moved from 18 to 20, leaving a gap. On his right, Pierre, with a startled look, rose from his seat and moved to the stage. A mistake. She had made a mistake. But Jonas knew, even as he had thought, that she hadn't. The chief elder made no mistakes, not at the ceremony of 12. He felt dizzy and couldn't focus his attention. He didn't hear what assignment Pierre received and was only dimly aware of the applause as the boy returned wearing his new badge. Then... 21, 22. The numbers continued in order. Jonas, Jonas sat dazed as they moved into the 30s and then the 40s, nearing the end. Each time at each announcement, his heart jumped for a moment and he thought wild thoughts. Perhaps now she would call his name. Could he have been forgotten his own? Could he have forgotten his own number? No, he had always been 19. He was sitting in the seat marked 19, but she had skipped him. He saw the others in his group glance at him, embarrassed, and then avert their eyes quickly. He saw a worried look on the face of his group leader. He hunched his shoulders and tried to make himself smaller in the seat. He wanted to disappear, to fade away, not to exist. He didn't dare to turn and find his parents in the crowd. He couldn't bear to see their faces darkened with shame. Jonas bowed his head and searched through his mind. What had he done wrong? All right, we'll keep going since that was quite the hip. 
cliffhanger. So, chapter eight. The audience was clearly ill at ease. They applauded at the final assignment, but the applause was piecemeal, no longer a crescendo of united enthusiasm. There were murmurs of confusion. Jonas moved his hands together, clapping, but it was an automatic, meaningless gesture that he wasn't even aware of. His mind had shut out all of the earlier emotions, the anticipation, excitement, pride, and even the happy kinship with his friends. Now he felt only humiliation and terror. The, joke was like... the chief elder waited until the uneasy applause subsided. Then she spoke again. I know, she said in her vibrant, gracious voice, that you are all concerned, that you feel I have made a mistake. She smiled. The community, relieved from its discomfort very slightly by her benign statement, seemed to be breathe more easily. It was very silent. Jonas looked up. I have caused you anxiety, she said. I apologize to my community. Her voice flowed over the assembled crowd. We accept your apology, they all uttered together. Jonas, she said, looking down at him, I apologize to you in particular. I caused you anguish. I accept your apology, Jonas replied shakily. Please come to the stage now. Earlier that day, dressing in, in his own dwelling, he had practiced the kind of jaunty, self-assured walk that he hoped he would make to the stage when he, his turn came. All of that was forgotten now. He simply willed himself to stand, to move his feet that felt weighted and clumsy, to go forward, up the steps, and across the platform until he stood at her side. Reassuringly, she placed her arm across his tense shoulders. Jonas has not been assigned, she informed the crowd, and his heart sank. Then she went on, Jonas has been selected. He blinked. What did that mean? He felt a collective questioning stir from the audience. They too were puzzled. In a firm commanding voice, she announced, Jonas has been selected to be our next receiver of memory. Then he heard the gasp, the sudden intake of breath drawn sharply in astonishment by each of the seated citizens. He saw their faces, the eyes widened in awe. He still did not understand. Such a selection is very, very rare, the chief elder told the audience. Our community has only one receiver. It is he who trains his successor. We have had our current receiver for a very long time, she went on. Jonas fo followed her eyes and saw that she was looking at one of the elders. The committee of elders were sitting together in a group, and the chief elder's eyes were now on one who sat in the midst, but seemed oddly separated from them. It was a man Jonas had never noticed before, a bearded man with pale eyes. Oh. Right here. Wait, what? Yeah. This is him. So they make no. it based off their eyes. No, no. But that is interesting, that connection there. Um, but it's not based off of that. Um, okay. So wait, there's no color in this world, right? Correct. Uh, so Jonas didn't know what she was referring to, but he could sense the discomfort of the audience. They shifted uneasily in their seats. Oh, I just skipped a whole paragraph. I would have been kicked out of the village, Okay. Because I have red hair. Oh, man. We failed in our last election, the chief elder said solemnly. It was 10 years ago when Jonas was just a toddler. I will not dwell on the experience because it causes us all terrible discomfort. Jonas didn't know what she was referring to, but he could sense the discomfort of the audience. They shifted uneasily in their seats. We have not been hasty this time, she continued. We could not afford another failure. Sometimes, she went on, speaking now in a lighter tone, relaxing the tension in the auditorium. We are not entirely certain about assignments, even after the most painstaking observations. Sometimes we worry that the one assigned might not develop through training every attribute necessary. Elevens are still children after all. When we observe as placefulness and patience, the requirements to become nurturer could with maturity be revealed as simply foolishness and indol indolence. So we continue to observe during training and to modify behavior when necessary. But the receiver in training cannot be observed, cannot be modified. This is stated quite clearly in the rules. He is to be alone apart while he is prepared by the current receiver for the job, which is the most honored in our community. The rule 
Is there like a book that's like the rule book? Is that like their Bible almost? Like pretty much, like yeah. Yep. Alone, apart, Jonas listened with increasing unease. Therefore, the selection must be sound. It must be a unanimous choice of the committee. They can have no doubts, however, fleeting. If, during the process, an elder reports a dream of uncertainty, that dream has the power to set a candidate aside instantly. Jonas was identified as the possible receiver many years ago. We have observed him meticulously. There were no dreams of uncertainty. He has shown all of the qualities that a receiver must have. With her hand still firmly on his shoulder, the chief elder listed the qualities. Intelligence, she said. We are all aware that Jonas has been a top student throughout his school days. Integrity, she said next. Jonas has, like all of us, committed minor transgressions. She smiled at him. We expect that. We hoped also that he would present himself promptly for chastisement, and he has always done so. Courage, she went on. Only one of us here today has ever undergone the rigorous training required of the receiver. He, of course, is the most important member of the committee, the current receiver. It was he who was reminded us again and again, again of their courage required. Jonas, she said, turning to him, but speaking in a voice that the entire community could hear, the training required of you involves pain physical pain what he felt fear flutter within him you have never experienced that yes you have scraped your knee and falls from your bicycle yes you have crushed your finger in a door last year jonas nodded at green as he recalled the incident and its accompanying misery but you will be faced now observation but you will be faced now she explained gently with pain of a magnitude that none of us here can comprehend beyond because it is beyond our experience the receiver himself was not able to describe it, only to remind us that you would be faced with it, that you would need immense courage. We cannot prepare, prepare you for that, but we feel certain that you are brave, she said to him. He did not feel brave at all. Not now. The fourth essential attribute, the chief elder said, is wisdom. Jonas has not yet acquired that. The acquisition of wisdom will come through his training. We are convinced that Jonas has the ability to acquire wisdom. That is what we looked for. Finally, the receiver must have one more quality, and it is one which I can only name but not describe. I do not understand it. You, you members of the community will not understand it either. Perhaps Jonas will, because the current receiver has told us that Jonas already has this quality. He calls it the capacity to see beyond. The chief elder watched as Jonas with, his, with a question in her eyes looked at Jonas with a question in her eyes. The audience watched him too. They were silent. For a moment, he froze, consumed with despair. He didn't have that, the whatever she said. He didn't know what that was. Now, now was the moment when he would have to confess, to say, no, I don't, I can't, and throw himself at their mercy, ask for their forgiveness, to explain that he had been wrongly chosen, that he was not the one, right one at all. But when he looked out across the crowd, the sea of faces, the things happened again. The thing that had happened with the apple. They changed. He blinked and it was gone. His shoulders straightened slightly. Briefly, he felt a tiny sliver of sureness for the first time. She was still watching him. They all were. I think it's true, he told the chief elder of the community. I don't understand it yet. I don't know what it is, but sometimes I see something and maybe it's beyond. She took his arm, her arm from his shoulders. Jonas, she said, speaking not to him alone, but to the entire community of which he was a part. You will be trained for your, to be our next receiver of memory. We thank you for your childhood. Then she turned and left the stage, left him there alone, standing and facing the crowd, which began spontaneously and col the collective murmur of his name. Wait, so he's very special? Mm -hmm. Wait, like, like uh, leader-wise special? Or like? Well, he'll be a chief elder. Like right away? Not right away, no. After his training is done, he'll become the chief elder. He'll oh, become, he'll be leader. not the chief elder, but he'll become on the committee of elders, not the chief elder. So is he going to be like kind of the leader since he's the only leader? Like what he says goes. Kind of. Jonas, it was a whisper at first, hushed, barely audible. Jonas, Jonas, then louder, faster. Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. 
With the chant, Jonas knew the community was accepting him and his new role, giving him life the way they had given it to the new child, Caleb. His heart swelled with gratitude and pride, but at the same time, he was filled with fear. He did not know that what his selection meant. He did not know what he was to become or what would become of him.